Podcasting is one of the biggest opportunities right now to reach more people, build your influence, and grow your brand. So that's why in this video, I'll be breaking down everything you need to know to make sure that you do your podcast the right way. Let's go. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Decori with Think Media. Now, whatever you are currently using to create your podcast, I'm here to tell you that everything I share in this video will still apply because I'll be giving you principles. However, in order to demonstrate the things that I'm gonna be talking about, I'll be using the sponsor of this video, which is StreamYard. If you're looking for an easier way to create your podcast, then I would consider checking it out. So just go to streamwiththink.com. But let's jump into the first question that I wanna answer, and that is, what is my podcast setup? Now, the first piece of gear that I would consider investing in is a great microphone. You want a microphone that creates that nice, rich and radio podcast sound, kind of like what you're hearing right now. That's called a dynamic mic, but you don't have to break the bank when investing into a dynamic mic. And you can get a mic that allows you to do many different types of podcasting. The first mic I want to recommend is the Samson Q9U. This mic comes in at around $100, but what's cool about this mic is it's very versatile. It gives you the ability to use it as a USB mic, very plug and play. You could simply plug in a USB into your computer or laptop, select it as your microphone, and then it sounds amazing and it's good to go. What's also cool about this mic is it has an XLR output. So if you wanted to do maybe an in-person podcast or record more high quality podcasts on a separate device, you could totally do so as well. And it also has a headphone jack, which will allow you to plug in headphones so that you can monitor your audio while you're conducting your podcast, which is a really nice feature if you wanna make sure that you're not peaking in audio or your audio is not too low. And then another cool option on the Q9U is just some adjustable options to make sure that your voice sounds the way you like it to, whether you want it to be more flat or you want you know, to put a high pass or a low pass and things like that. But I personally love the Samsung Q9U, it sounds amazing. But if you want another kind of maybe level up of a mic, I would encourage you to check out the Rode PodMic USB. This mic as well has a versatile option with the headphone jack, the XLR, and the USB capability. However, what's cool about the Rode is not only the fact that it is a little bit smaller, so if you just want a less intrusive mic, it's nice, but it comes with software that will allow you to adjust the mic accordingly within your computer or laptop, which is a, a feature a lot of people like. And then I would say the highest tier of a mic like this would be the Shure MV7. This mic has a very distinct look and it as well has everything you need as far as the XLR, USB, and headphone jack and then also the software that sure would include, but we'll post links down to everything I mentioned down in the description below if you wanna check out these mics. Personally, if I had to choose one, I absolutely love the Samson Q9U because of its price point, the way it looks, and I think it sounds pretty great. The next piece of gear that I would consider you invest in is a light. Yes, why Omar, why do I need a light? Well, you need a light to make sure that when you use a camera, that it actually looks good. Even if you're using a webcam, a great light will make you look so much better and so if you have the space to allow it i would encourage you to get a cob light and the light i like is the amaran 60d uh, with a lantern softbox this combo when you put it all together with the light stand will probably cost you about 250 dollars but it'll be totally worth it and you'll never have to buy another light in the future in my opinion it's it's a great light it'll make you look good it's literally the light that i'm using right now to light my face if you're at a desk and you can't really fit a light like that maybe behind your desk and i would encourage you to get a desk light and the one i like to recommend for a whole desk setup is the godox e45 light and it comes with everything you need to include a wireless remote so that you can control the settings and make sure that it looks really good but if you're in a tight space, this is probably the best light that you would go with. And it's a great deal. It's about $140. Everything you need is in the kit. Then lastly is your camera setup or your webcam. And it's important that you have a camera on when you record a podcast, even if you don't plan on posting the full video. Turn on a camera because that's what you're gonna use to promote social clips, which I'll talk about later in this video. But if you're looking for a good webcam upgrade, I would encourage you to check out this Anchor webcam that costs about $60. And when you pair it with a good light, it'll look Look amazing. Uh, if you have a smartphone, you actually can use your smartphone as a webcam as well, especially the rear facing camera. And these cameras look amazing with good lighting. But if you're at a place where you're looking to maybe get really high quality video with your podcast, then I would encourage you to check out this compact point and shoot camera from Sony, which is the ZV-1 Mark II. And this camera is incredible because not only is it everything you need, it's easy to use. Just use a USB cable, plug it into your computer or laptop, and then boom, you'll have an incredible image for your 
podcast videos. If you want like the creme de la creme of a setup, then I would encourage you to get a camera that has the ability to change out your lenses and getting the right lens paired with the right camera can really give you that magic look you've been looking for, that super blurry background, that really crispy image. For that camera and lens combination, I'll post it down in the description below, but similarly, you just simply use a USB cable to plug right in. But if you do have a camera already and you wanna use it as your webcam, you totally can with the use of a micro HDMI cable plugged into a HDMI capture card. And this will turn your camera into a webcam, which is a really cool hack on really maximizing the quality of your podcast with the camera you already own. The next question you wanna ask yourself when it comes to your podcast is what is the format of my podcast? And really, I believe right now there's essentially two formats that you can go with. The first format is to do an interview type of podcast where you have multiple people, at least two or more. Second is a solo podcast. We actually have the Think Media podcast, and it doesn't mean you have to choose and stick with one for every episode, but answering that question before you actually conduct your podcast will make sure that you do it the right way. So let's just go down the path of an interview show. If you have at least two people on your podcast, whether it's yourself and your guests, you maybe you wanna do that in person, and that's awesome. If you do, then you definitely want two microphones and, and a recorder, uh, maybe like a Zoom PodTrack recorder, which is fairly inexpensive, and it'll record a high quality audio file, but a huge opportunity is to actually conduct your interviews online. And if you're using Zoom to conduct online interviews right now, stop, like absolutely stop because it's killing the quality of your video. And I know that Zoom is fairly easy to most people. StreamYard is, I would say, just as easy. Simply send the link to your StreamYard to your guests and then they'll be able to hop on and then you can conduct your interview. But here's what's cool about StreamYard when using it for interviews, you can create different kinds of sets, right? You can have the look on screen when it's just the person talking. So it's full screen on the person that is giving the information at the moment. And then you can also create split screen views. You could put these looks on your keyboard and then it could switch while you're actually conducting your interview, which is really nice. Now, if you wanna deliver a solo podcast episode, definitely keeping it simple would be the key, right? You got your one angle that looks really good. You got your audio connected, which is awesome. But one thing you could do to make it a little bit more interesting is to actually, in advance, create your tips or your points using StreamYard. The way you do this in StreamYard is so easy. Just go to the right of the screen where it says banners, and based on the points you wanna deliver, you can just create custom banners or you can hit create a banner just type in whatever your point is then if you want to customize the look or maybe the colors of that banner you can just go down to brand and then you'll find all the various options to be able to do those things like the color or maybe even the shape of the actual banner itself and things like that so so many things that you could do but also very easy to do when you do it in StreamYard. Now that you've decided on the format of your show, which by the way, I'd love to know what is the format of your show? Are you trying to do interview shows or solo shows? Would love to know, put it down in the comments. But the next question you want to ask yourself is what is recording my podcast? And really you have the option to capture your podcast in real time, like simply just capture it, record it, or you can also stream your podcast where you are just doing a one take straight through. And that's what's really cool about podcasting, honestly, is that there is this live, very transparent and not polished energy, right? This is why people listen to long form podcasts. This is why people will listen to a conversation and you don't want it heavy edited in all honesty. A, a very heavily edited podcast is a talking head video. So this is, a, this is why it's a cool way, especially if you're a busy person and you're like, man, I don't want all these edits. However, you can still capture it or you could stream it. And both are available to you on StreamYard. You can actually capture local files as well that regardless of the connectivity of your internet will capture a clean video and audio file, which honestly is just a great feature if you want that peace of mind to make sure that you know it gets captured even if there is a hiccup. But what's cool about StreamYard is being able to live stream directly onto either your YouTube channel or maybe your Facebook page, or maybe you have a private Facebook community and you can live stream straight into it, which is really nice because even when you're done live streaming, you're gonna be given the file from StreamYard themselves so that you could do other things with that file. Another cool reason to capture your podcast using StreamYard is the ability to actually make trim edits on StreamYard itself using their editor. So let's just say you finish your podcast 
and you have a seven minute moment where you wanna redistribute that podcast into your onto your YouTube channel, you can actually do that in the back end of StreamYard using their editor. Just mark that in and out point and then upload that moment into your YouTube or Facebook group or what have you, or you could download it and edit it later. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that podcasters make and oftentimes is making them quit is not including ads in their own podcast and your own ads, like literally sponsor your own podcast. This podcast is sponsored by me, by my business. And you can simply do this on StreamYard by actually clicking on present in the studio and sharing a video. And then you would just upload be a pre-recorded ad that you've created. And then you could play that video at a good time in your podcast to promote your products and your services. This is a great way to keep your podcast funded and by using a feature like this on StreamYard, it just makes it super easy. So now that you got your podcast recorded, the next question you wanna ask is what do I do after I record my podcast? So let's talk distribution. And this is essentially like a checklist. So I would encourage you to pull out something and uh, write these down. But the first thing you're gonna do with your full length episode, so we have our full length episode, maybe it's 30, 45, or an hour long, you're gonna upload that full length episode audio to a distribution platform. What we like using at Think Media for the podcast is Buzzsprout. Now there are dozens to choose from and they all do the same thing. So I would encourage you to just decide on one. But uploading your audio file to a distribution platform is a powerful task and that is because once you upload your file one time, it then puts it on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify and everywhere else people consume podcasts. So that's definitely a step that you wanna make sure you do. The second thing you wanna do is upload the full length video to YouTube as a podcast. Now YouTube has new upload features where you don't just upload it as a video, you actually upload it as a podcast. And this could be found when you go into your YouTube studio and you select upload, you have the option to upload podcasts. Now maybe if you have already, you've already uploaded uh, episodes on your channel before, then you can actually create a podcast playlist, which will still categorize your videos as a podcast. So if you have a backlog of podcasts, I would encourage you to do that. The next thing you're going to want to do is edit and repurpose your podcast. And when I say repurpose it, I mean, you're going to take moments from your podcast, I would say 60 seconds and under, and you're going to edit them in a vertical format. Now, what's cool about StreamYard is they actually have in the editor the ability to create vertical reels and shorts, which is nice. I would say the only downside of this is that they don't allow you to zoom in the file so that you could fill the screen. So it's your horizontal video on a vertical format, but for the sake of speed, it doesn't get as easier than that. However, if I didn't have a pro level editing software like Premiere, Final Cut, or DaVinci, what you can do is actually use StreamYard's editor and just do the normal horizontal way and trim a moment that you think is really good that is under 60 seconds or so, and then send it to your smartphone and use CapCut to create that vertical moment. CapCut is a free editing software that is so easy to use and you can actually format it, add captions, and then upload that to YouTube Shorts or Instagram Reels, which is probably gonna get a lot of people to watch your full length podcast because they're gonna get so much value out of that short moment. Another cool thing you could do is actually take the full length of your podcast and upload it to an AI editor called Opus. Opus is an incredible resource that uploading a 40 plus minute video will kick you back about 10 clips and then AI will go to work and do their best to give you some clips and you can design it with captions and things like that. Now, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it definitely beats a poke in the eye and it'll get a lot of that done without having to actually expend the time and energy to do so. So it's really nice. Check out that. I will put a link to it down in the description below. The next opportunity when it comes to distribution is creating these highlight clips. Let's just say you asked a guest you had on your podcast, how did you go from six figures to a million dollars a year in your business? And they kind of break that down in a very easy, digestible, you know, strategic way. You can actually take that five or seven or 10 minute moment and actually re-upload that to your YouTube channel and then re-upload that audio to your audio podcast as a bonus episode because some people aren't even gonna get to that moment because they're not watching your full length episode, but making sure you get in front of them on other value pieces of content is really smart. I remember shooting a podcast with Nolan Molt from the Think Media team and we just talked about YouTube and then what actually happened is we went into talking about how vlogging is not the same. And we took that eight minute moment from the podcast and uploaded it to YouTube and that video went viral. But this is how you maximize your podcast. You're already putting in all this work and you're already taking the time to conduct these interviews. 
why not get more eyes and more ears on your podcast? And so that is the complete podcasting workflow. I would encourage you to check out StreamYard and I thank you StreamYard for sponsoring this video. It really is one of the easiest ways to get going with a podcast or an interview show. And so just go to streamwiththink.com to check them out. And if you wanna check out another video from us here at Think Media, you can click or tap the screen. Can't wait to see you in a future one. Peace.